Hello friends, welcome to ASP.NET uh, tutorial. In this video, we will see how to read web.config entries. So, in the last video, we talked about the hierarchy of configuration file in .NET based application domain. Now, we will concentrate on creating the web.config file. For a specific application then we will also see how to read the configuration entries we will design the form as shown beside and here if you see we have a form with a, a combo box as well as a label this combo box will load the configuration entries from the web.config file and once you pick a specific configuration entry its value is displayed in this label so we will end up in creating the web.config file to hold key value pairs and if you see this is the key and there is a corresponding value and web.config file holds key entry pairs inside the offsetting uh, subdivision when form loads it shows all the keys by reading the web.config so here if you see we have keys setting 1 to setting 5 but uh, in real web.config file this will be a meaningful name but uh, here uh, the keys are uh, uh, we named it as a setting 1 to setting 5 that means there are different keys to hold a setting value for a specific uh, setting when we select a specific key say for example here we are selecting 3 right when we select a specific key its value is displayed in the label control so its value is value for setting 3 so you can imagine the key as a back color and then in value we will be actually storing the background color for the application likewise you can have many settings a setting that is related to your business logic also can go inside this uh, uh, web.config file right that's all so once you select a specific key its value will be displayed so now let's go to the demo so here we are inside the visual studio we will create new project and we will name this project as asp.net we will pick asp.net web application and we will name it as asp017 web config demo So we will go ahead with the uh, empty template and click OK here. So by default if you see it created the web.config file for us so we will add a web form first to our uh, project so here we are choosing add new item and web form so under web we are choosing web form and naming this web form as read config file dot aspx and we will add this web form to our uh, project and inside the form we can start designing our uh, sample form let's go with the split view all right first uh, we will add a label control So this is our uh, ASP label control 
and text we are giving it as select configuration key and the label is appearing here since we have a br tag whatever we add will go in the next line all right next we create the server side control asp drop down list and the id what we are giving is drop down key and we are fixing the width and height let's save it and if you want to change the width and height you can do that here and the entry will be changed in the design view all right now we have select configuration key as well as the um, drop down list control with us next uh, we will create one more uh, label control this is to hold the or uh, just to display the setting value which is picked in the combo box as we already saw in the uh, powerpoint slide so as we already saw in the theory part the setting key value will be displayed here in this combo box once you select the key value i mean the key we will display the value in this uh, label all right our uh, form design is ready if you want to view it once you can run it so that's all now let's concentrate on uh, the web.config so for that in the solution explorer double click and open the web.config file so this is our web.config file and it already have many section system.web and uh, system.code dom compiler all those stuff now we will add our own section so this is the configuration right under the configuration we are adding the application specific setting so we have the tag app settings right here we have app settings then we have uh, the xml element called add so this will add a setting at runtime so at runtime we will enter inside this app setting and when we see this add command we will be adding the key value pair key is setting one and value is value for setting one so now we have our web.config file is ready all right now we will go to the code behind the file for this specific web form expand uh, spx file then double click on the cs file so this one is the designer file generated by the uh, id visual studio id we will make code change in the code behind file so first we will include the record namespace to read the configuration setting using System dot configuration. This will provide the required utility classes so that uh, we can read the configuration settings. So here is the page load. Right, we want to load all the setting key value inside our combo box. So the perfect place is page load. So in the page load, uh, the combo box will be available. So in pre init itself all the server side controls are ready so inside the page load we can load whatever initialization we want to make with all the controls presented in the form so in the page load we are checking whether it's a post back so if it is a post back we don't want to load the combo because the combo already have the required value that means when the page is loaded for the very first time we want to load the control i mean the combo box control with the uh, settings key so that's why here we are checking is post back is false 
so if that is the case inside the if block we will load all the required uh, key inside the drop down list so here if you see we are retrieving all the keys configuration manager this will point to our web.config file so by using this configuration manager we can access the bypods from the web.config file and here we are choosing app settings and if you look at web.configuration manager will point to this web.config and we are directly specifying a specific setting app settings so app settings all keys that means all these keys so these are all returned and collected inside a simple string array and if you look at the intelligence the all keys returns string array right so since we have the string array in hand we are simply forming a for each and we are iterating through the keys then dd key is our uh, drop down list we are uh, getting the collection and adding the key so once the form is loaded we have all the settings read into the combo box now let's run it okay a curly press is missing and we will add it and you can see in our combo box we loaded all the keys here and in the web.config file if we have one more key we can reload okay maybe the port number is gone we will run it again and uh, you can and you can see the new settings get reflected in the combo box setting 6 right now we will read the value for the selected settings for that we need to check the selected index changed event so here we will handle this event selected index changed So first we retrieve the key from the combo box, DD keys, selected item, selected item will return the item that got selected by the user in the drop down list, right, from that selected item we are reading the text and storing that as a key. next from configuration manager we know that from configuration manager web.config so configuration manager points to web.config we are directly going to the app settings and using the indexing we are supplying the key and reading the string value right by supplying the key we are reading the string value app settings we know that 
this is the app settings and we are supplying the key for example if we supply setting 4 then the function configuration manager app settings of key will return us the value and if you look at here right so from the intelligence you can know it's a name value collection from this name value collection by supplying the key we will be getting the value and the value is nothing but the uh, setting uh, setting value uh, that corresponds to the supplied key right we have the setting value we use the label text and update it so this is our label text right will be a config value not text and whatever setting we are at we are supplying that to the text property of the label now we will run it Yeah, I'm picking setting 5. Okay, we need to set the auto post back property for the drop down list. Here we are setting it as true. Now we will run it. So that's all. So now we know how to create the web dot configuration entry and read the settings at runtime. And based on the value read from the settings, your application behavior will change or uh, it will apply the setting to the web application. That's all. We are ending this uh, sub series. Just now you saw the demo. Thank you for watching. Bye.